read Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today for the, a little while about confessing the blessing. Amen. Can you say that with me? Confessing. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Confessing. Amen. I got them now. Confessing the blessing. Amen. I'm going to come down here. I hope this doesn't make anyone uncomfortable, but uh, I want to uh, be a little close to the children this morning because I want to Thank you, brother. I want to be able to uh, get uh, right in front of them. They've been a little distracted this morning. Somebody say amen, Pastor. Amen. Uh -huh, yeah, and so we had to do a little redirecting this morning. But they're going to get back on track because uh, Jamari has already prayed that they would get their act together. Amen. Uh, Sister Cyrus, he prayed that they would get their act together. Amen. Amen. So I need everybody looking at me and get ready to say, preach Pastor White. All right. We, we, we're going to work through it this morning. All right. We're going to work, work through it. Confessing the blessing. Uh, all right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, listen, I don't want you to uh, get uh, this uh, message this morning, the objective is to first make sure everybody in here knows that you are blessed. Amen. Amen. I don't care what's going on in your life. You are still blessed. You might not have everything just like you want it, but I want you to know that you're still blessed. I know that there are some struggles that you may be encountering or dealing with today, but you're yet blessed. Uh, you might have some problems that nobody knows about but you. But I want you to know that you're still blessed. You might have some things that are going on in your life that if somebody else were to know what you were dealing with personally, they would, they would shake their head and say, I don't understand how you're able to handle it all. But in spite of everything you're going through, you are still blessed. And I'm not just talking about physical blessings because all of us, if we got up this morning, we know we got some physical blessings. Come on. If you got a roof over your head, you're blessed. Amen. If you got uh, uh, clothes on your back, you're blessed. If you got shoes on your feet, you're blessed. But that's the stuff on the outside. But there's some physical blessings that you got going on on the inside that are much more important than, this, than the ones you got going on on the outside. Because look, if you, when you open your eyes this morning and uh, your, uh, your, the, the, the nerve in the back of your eye took the images that were in your room and flipped them right side up because when they came into your eye, they were upside down. I want you to know that you're blessed. Amen. Don't you know that when you put your feet on the floor this morning that your left ventricle compressed and squeezed blood into your right ventricle and your right ventricle sent that blood into the various capillaries of your body so you were able to uh, stand on your feet and move this morning. I want you to know that you are blessed. And don't you know that the food that you laid down, that you sat and, and ate yesterday evening, that all night long last night, somebody know what I'm talking about, your stomach was steady churning and digesting that food so that you would have energy to get up this morning. I'm telling you that you are blessed. Well, you looking at me and, and, and you wonder, I, I still don't get it. Well, if you can hear my voice, that means sound waves are going through this room and your ear is able to capture those sound waves and you're able to process those sound waves and turn it into language that your brain can comprehend and you can understand. I'm talking about you are blessed. And, and, and the Bible said that you're blessed going in and blessed coming out. That means that even though you might go in one way, you can come out another way. See, in this life in which we live, you might go into something with some trouble, but you can come out of it with some triumph. You might go into some problem as a, as a victim, but you can come out with victory. You can go into something burdened down, but you can come out with the burden removed and the yoke destroyed. I wish I could have somebody to say, preach Reverend White. 
Amen. I want you to know that you are blessed. And, and the psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, you know, I want you to be encouraged, my brother and my sister, that it's nothing wrong with letting folk know that you're blessed. Amen. Amen. In other words, when they say, well, you know, uh, there's some problem that's going on in the world. You can tell them, say, yeah, baby, but I'm still blessed. <laughs> I know that everything is going on in your life is going on in my life, but I'm still blessed. I know that I got some of the same challenges that you have, but I'm still blessed. Well, why are you so blessed, preacher? And why are we so blessed? We're blessed not because of what we did, but because of what Jesus did. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say amen this morning. I said it, and I'm going to say it again. We are blessed not because of what we did, but because of what Jesus did. And, and I want to talk about some blessed people this morning. Uh, there was one man that was blessed, and uh, even though he was blessed, his, he got in some trouble in his life. And uh, his name was Daniel. And Daniel was a blessed man. And Daniel was so blessed that his blessings caused him some trouble. And, 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 and Daniel being having a blessed life, he was blessed primarily because, not because of his work life, but he was blessed because of his prayer life. Oh, there you go, Reverend White. I know you were going to work it in some kind of way. Because we ought to have a prayer life that reflects of what God is doing in our life. Amen. Amen. And Daniel's prayer life reflected what God was doing in his life. But you know, whenever you uh, start to working on the Lord's program, don't you know that trouble is coming your way? Amen. Being a, a servant of the Lord does not guarantee you that you will not have trouble in your life. And Daniel found himself in some trouble because of his prayer life, and they threw Daniel in the lion den. Yes, and I want you to know something this morning, child of God. You might be looking at me and I'm looking at you. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But listen, if your prayer life is not getting you thrown in some lions, then you might not be praying right. Amen. Oh, I know y'all saying, Pastor White, what are you talking about? See, let me tell you something. Uh, in the movie War Room, uh, there was a young man that told his friend, he said, I'll see you in church. And the brother said, I want, and I, not only do I want to see you in church, but I want to see the church in you. Amen. Amen. So what I'm saying is that people ought to not only see us in church, but they ought to see the church in us. Amen. And that what, that when you see the church in me, that means that I'm going to see about folk that are sick and, and that are down and out. That means that I'm going and I'm praying for some people that have some problems in their life. That means that I'm not talking about them, but I'm praying for them. Amen. That means that I'm not spreading gossip on them, but I'm going down in prayer and saying, Lord, would you help my brother or my sister with the situation in their life? So your prayer life ought to get you thrown in some lion den. But there were some other boys that got in trouble, and they were uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were called the three Hebrew boys. Amen. Now, children, let me tell you something about these three Hebrew boys. They got in trouble because they would not do what somebody else told them they were supposed to do. See, there was a king called Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted the, the, the Hebrew boys to live a life that was not pleasing to God. Somebody say, preach, Reverend White. Preach, and and let, me, let me tell you something. Everybody doesn't want you to live a life that is pleasing to God. Sometimes people want you to cut up and act a fool in school because you think you cool. Amen. I'm preaching, but y'all don't want to help me and say Amen. Amen. But listen, don't you let nobody make you act no fool in school because you know that acting a fool in school is not pleasing to God. Somebody say amen, Pastor. Amen. Yes, yeah, so, so, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael, I think I got that right, amen, they were uh, boys who have been picked out to be picked on. And I want you to know something in life. You will be, be, you will be picked out to be picked on. Oh, don't believe that because you rise up that folk ain't going to talk about you. Amen. Because the higher you get, the more rocks they throw at you. But understand something, child of God, that they can't get up as high as God is going to raise you up. 
that little rocks just keep falling at your feet because God can raise you up so high that your enemies can't reach you. Amen. Somebody do this and say, shake the haters off. Yeah, just shake them off. That's all you got to do is shake them off. That's all you got to do. That was a, that was a, 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 a mule one day, uh, and he fell in a well. And when he fell down in that well, his, the, the farmer came and tried to see how he was going to get his mule out of that well. And he couldn't figure out how to get him out because he knew if he threw a rope down in there that the, the mule couldn't get the rope around his neck so that he could pull him out. So the farmer took his shovel and he just started throwing dirt down in that hole. And every time he'd throw dirt down in that hole, it would land on that old mule. And every time that dirt would land on him, he would just shake it, shake it off. Amen. And the more he shook that dirt off and it fell underneath his feet, he would just clamp it under his feet like that. And he, the, the farmer would throw some more dirt in there and the mule would just shake it off and tramp it under his feet. And as time went by, the more dirt, that mule just started rising and rising. And, and the well started getting spilled up. And before you know it, he had rise, risen all the way out of that well. What am I saying? I'm saying that when folk throw dirt on you, child of God, all you got to do is... Shake it off. And when you shake it off, you can just put it under your feet and God's going to keep raising you up higher and higher and higher. Oh, I got somebody out there. Today. Amen. But I told you that I was going to talk about this thing in Galatians 3.13. I'm going to have to do a little bit of teaching Rick, right quick because I, I want the children to understand this. Now, listen, I, I want you all to make sure that you get this. Jamar, are you listening? All right. There's two things that you can be in life. You can either be blessed, everybody say blessed, blessed. or you can be cursed, everybody say cursed. Curse. Okay, blessing is good, say amen. amen, but cursing is bad, say amen. amen. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of cursing that grown folk do, amen, I ain't looking at nobody, amen, I'm just looking at who I'm looking at, amen. I'm talking about a curse meaning not being Blessed. Amen. Not being where God wants you to be. Come on, help me preach. Not doing, come on somebody, what God wants you to do. When, you, when you're living like that, you're living over in the curse. Amen. But when you are living the way God wants you to live, you're living in the Blessing. Amen. And, 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 and somebody asked me, somebody asked me one day, they said, uh, Pastor, uh, I want to ask you a question about this man named Abraham. And I said, all right, what do you want to know about Abraham? They said, I want to know why Abraham was so blessed. Well, is there anybody interested? Well, I, I think maybe I got to give you a little background on Abraham. You see, Abraham was in Ur of the Chaldees. And he had grown up not worshiping the Lord God. In fact, Abraham's father was a moon worshiper. Terah was, was, not, was not calling on the name of the Lord. But Abraham had an experience with God. And God told Abraham to get thee from amongst our people and from around the folk that you came up with and go to a place that I'm going to show you. I wish this was third Sunday so I could preach it like I feel it this morning. Because see, sometimes when God tells you to go somewhere, he ain't going to tell you where. He's going he gonna to tell you, go to a place I'm going to show you. That means you got to go not knowing. And, and, and in, this, in this adult life, a lot of times we just have to trust God and go where he tells us to go, not knowing where we're going. Oh, that, I didn't get no amen right there. Because, see, it's tough, Pastor, when I got to go and I don't know where I'm going to go. Amen. But, see, when you're walking with the Lord, you can trust him because don't you know that if you tr walk with the Lord, the Lord will walk with you. Amen. So Abraham was a blessed man. Why was he blessed, Pastor? He was blessed because God told him, uh, he said, uh, Abraham, I'm going to take you out and I'm going to show you the stars in the sky. And Abraham, you look up at the stars in the sky 
and those same number of stars that you see in the sky, that's the way your seed is going to cover the earth. Right. Now, 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 that might not sound very uh, complicated to you, but here's the thing about it. At that time, Abraham did not have any children. And the truth of the matter was, his wife was 70 years old, and Abraham was older than she was. Right. And God told him, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Well, you don't believe me. It's in the Bible. You can look right at Romans 4 and 20. It says, as, I, as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things would be not as though they were who against hope, believed in hope that he might be the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And so that's what, told, that's what God told Abraham. He told him, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Y'all holding along with me? Amen. Are y'all following with me? So we're going to teach you the difference between being blessed and being cursed. Because God told Abraham, if you do what I tell you to do, I'm going to bless you. All right? And number two, I'm going to make your name great. You check me out, Genesis 12. And number three, you will be a blessing. Right. Amen. Now, uh, most of us, we, 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 we oh God, thank you for, for blessing me. We love being blessed. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Everybody wants to be blessed. Uh-huh. Everybody wants their name to be great. Right. Amen. Amen. But God said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your name great, not so that you can be Mr. Big Stuff. And stick your chest out. And everybody say, oh my, my, look at Mr. Big Stuff. Right, right. No, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Amen. And that's what God told Abraham. Now, God knew that there is an enemy. Everybody say an enemy. enemy. And the enemy doesn't want you to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Oh, I didn't get no, that wasn't strong enough. I said the enemy doesn't want you to be blessed. Amen. 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 And children, here's the way the enemy keeps you from being blessed. See, he sits right here on your shoulder and he tells you, don't do what they told you to do. You can do what you want to do. Can't nobody make you do nothing. See, the grown folk quiet right now because they know that he sits on their shoulders and tells them that same thing. I'm preaching. I'm going to get a good amen here in a minute. Uh -huh. He just changes his game when he's talking to grown folk because he tells them, you grown. Uh, you, you grown two times. And can't nobody tell you what to do. Amen. I knew them when they didn't have a I had to bring it home to him, amen. amen. I had to bring it home to him. That's right. mm -hmm. but, 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 but God knew that you had an enemy. Uh -huh. So Galatians 3.16, 3.15 says, Christ has redeemed us. Yeah. Yeah. What, did this, what, what does this mean? Redeem means he bought us out of slavery. And put us in the position of a free man. He bought us out of the condition that we were in and put us in a better position. So Christ redeemed us. As, let somebody say amen. amen. And he redeemed us from what? He redeemed us from the curse. Jesus redeemed us from being cursed. For one thing and, and one reason. He redeemed us from the curse so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That's right. Now, Abraham was a Jew. We are all, come on, Gentile. So we didn't have a right to Abraham's blessing because we were not born Jews. But Jesus came in and he stood in the middle. And when they stretched him wide, he stood between the blessing and the curse. 
And he became the curse for us. And when he became the curse for us, then the blessing that Abraham had been promised could go to us. Amen. Why? 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 Because Galatians 3.14 said that we might receive, watch me now, the promise of the Spirit. God said, I'm going to take what was written on tablets of stone and I'm going to write it, Elder, in your heart. How are you going to do that, God? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So he threw the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Jesus said, I go to prayer a place for you where I go. You, you, can't, you can't come unless I go and, and get it straight for you. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. But when I get where I'm going and I get fixed what I'm going to fix when I get there, I'm going to send somebody back for you. Who are you sending, Jesus? I'm going to send another comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. All right? And look, where, where is uh, Aaliyah? Where's Aaliyah? Okay, come on, come on, come on, Aaliyah. Come on, come on, hurry, hurry, sweetie. Come on. Okay, so when we, when we brought Aaliyah into the church, when we brought her, stand right here, baby. When we brought Aaliyah into the church, we went to Romans 10 and 9. If thou would confess with thy mouth, uh-huh, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay? For with the heart man, oh, y'all didn't say that strong enough. With the heart man, the heart man believes, and with the what? Confession is made unto salvation. Okay, go ahead and sit back down, baby. So when we are confessing, our faults. Mm -hmm. Bible says confess your fault. Yeah. One to another. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're confessing our wrongdoing. Uh -huh. When we are confessing our problems. Yeah. When we are confessing our sad situation uh -huh. in our life. Please, my brother and my sister, don't forget to confess the blessing. Amen. 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 Because all of that other stuff that we spent a whole lot of time confessing. You remember what Pastor said about God took all that stuff and he did what? He put it behind his back. And when he put it behind his back, he put up a sign that said, no fishing. So if God has forgotten it, you need to forget it too. But the blessing, God said, for a thousand generations, I'm going to bless you. And you're going to be blessed going in, blessed coming out. You're going to be blessed in the city. And blessed in the field. You're going to be blessed. And you're going to be the head. And not the tail. Above. And not beneath. And everything that your hands touch. I'm going to bless it. Why are we blessed? We are blessed. Because one Friday evening. Our redeemer. Walked down through the streets of Jerusalem. And look, he had a curse on his back. Somebody called it the old rugged cross. And he walked through the streets. And, and look, the curse got heavy. And somebody sung a song, must Jesus bear the cross alone. And, and all the world go free. Help me, Jerusalem. No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. I'm so glad that he bore that cross. 
that tried to eat. And when they stretched him out, they made a mistake, brothers, because they lifted him up. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men under me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Born in his spirit. Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. And I want you to know something. I'm glad that Jesus stood in the gap for me. He's good. He's so good. Has he ever been good to you? Oh, you ought to say, praise the Lord. You ought to say hallelujah. You ought to say thank you, Jesus. I'm glad uh, that we have a Savior uh, that stood in the gap for me. I'm glad about it. Amen. to our period of invitation, amen.